visited the stock exchange because of you know my relationship with them. They, they asked what I was doing and they said they were going to give me a license that I should start off a sub-booking company. And I was telling them, oh, I don't have funds, I don't have generals and, you know, who can come to on board. Because, you know, at that time, it, it was the generals that were on the board, all the security companies and all the big shots. I said, look, <laughs> I didn't have any plans for this and I'm not a general, I don't have them. They said, no, we would like you for what you have done, we would like you to come, take this one, fill it, and you get a license. Even at that time, they were not licensing any public. So, um, I got the license, and that's how I started the business. And this business was started in my children's study room, with my computer, my laptop at the time, and uh, those clients who have been faithful, who have, who have been supporting all along, became my first clientele base. And they were willing to uh, give me the opportunity, they were willing to pay for those services. So when you serve customers well, they would bond with you, they'll be dedicated, they'll be supporting you also when that time comes for a payback. So it's important that when we have goals, you know, we keep them focused. And then when we serve our clients, we serve them with all that we have, because at the end of the day, it will come back to you. And that's how the business has gone, and the business grew from a sub working company, and it became, uh, we went into, the first um, completion board meeting that we had was in, on my dining table, in my sitting room. And uh, one of one of the parties that came to for the meeting came into my home. What is is this? What is this? Is this the meeting? I said yes. This is the meeting. It's a completion board meeting. Um, I think at that time it was broadband. We were trying to raise money for yes. And what happened? It took because of. Confidence took expertise, it took relationship, perseverance, you know, for and confidence for you to be able to call that meeting in your living room on a dining table. Something that usually would happen in a five star hotel, you know, or a place like this. But God has also helped me <laughs> uh, to a larger extent, um, uh, to a whole extent. You know, in all of this. So that's how um, the business grew and has continued to grow and um, being able to attract good talents that has helped the business to grow. So that's where we are. So do you think there's a responsibility and then tied into that, that you're um, doing things without recourse to payment, I think it's also a female thing. And I think it goes a bit to what Odiri was saying, which is there's just uh, not necessarily um, valuing the value that you bring to the table. It's just like, oh, it's easy, so I'll, oh, I'll do it for you. And perhaps men are slightly different in the way that they think. They constantly think, I'm bringing value, and you're going to pay for that value. And I'm going to even give you um, a figure that may cause many people to detract and say, how can you value yourself that high? So, Ms. Zabi, can you help us to move from those stereotypes and, you know, being a role model, not wanting to, an advantage position, do you have an obligation to, and then also pivoting from, um, in your case, it was successful, um, people eventually um, demanded to pay value for that. But sometimes, you just keep doing the free work and then you get surprised, they go to somebody else and they pay the value there. In my business, I don't call my people staff. I call them leaders. And I believe that you can lead from any position. And a lot of them have gone to become leaders in their different areas of, um, of, of influence and uh, desires 
if I had a um, career. Um, so I think if all of us here will go out and at every point interrogate situations around us, those stereotypes, those biases, and begin to act on it. That's also something that I learned, that something that has to do with your purpose in life is that thing that offends you. That thing that agitates you when you wake up, you know, you're not happy about. So let's question, let's find out what those things are and question them. Um, interrogate that. Why should it be that way? Why must my daughter play with a baby doll? Why can't she play with a train and put, be able to put together a train structure? Why must I go into nursing? Why can't I be an engineer? Why can't I be a pilot? Why must I do something that they believe that is for that about? We need to question that. And then when we do that, let's not be selfish. Let us look beyond ourselves and see what else we can bring to the table. Because at the time that I decided to come, I had to leave the office every day, leave my work every day, come to the floor, do my work, uh, do the Ole work, and go back and continue my work there. There was no value add, so to speak, at that time. But I went through that for 40 sessions. Is it 40 sessions or 80? 80 sessions. 80 sessions at the time. And then also, I had to study for the exams, because it would be a shame if you see this woman there and she doesn't pass the examination. So you have to study to make sure that you know you pass the exam and you pass it well. So in terms of providing service and not wanting to be paid, at the time I was I was not I was I didn't have any um, I, I didn't have a setup so to speak. I had relationships, and I was feeding those relationships, okay? I was feeding those relationships. It wasn't like a job. But as soon as I set up, it became business. You know, it became business, it was well planned, and then the prices, the commissions, the fees were set, and it was not presented appropriately. Not my personal relationships, I make sure that my work doesn't get conflicted with it. So what happens is when I have a relationship and you come in, the first thing we do is we agree on the terms of engagement. Agreed ab initio before we even set up. So that at the end of the day, it is clear. For me, integrity is very critical. So that whatever we put down on paper becomes what we do going forward. So whenever you know you come, you cannot you cannot say that um, we didn't agree on this. It will be written down and agreed on. So it's important that when before you take on any assignment, you take on any mandate, you agree on the terms of reference, the terms of engagement, so that that would support what you do. Mm -hmm.